case, they can always send it up to the Crown Court. And, and that means that uh, the judges in the Crown Court can deal with the more complex, serious matters, and, and the magistrates can handle things based on their common sense and their, the fact that they're trusted for the kind of people that they are. And so you can think how, actually, in our nation, these people were... this. This setup, this process, this structure was set up because people read this story and they saw that was a good idea. What if Moses hadn't taken his father-in-law's advice? Would they have ever got to the river, Jordan? Would they have ever got that far? Uh, would God have had to replace Moses with someone else? Or would there have been, you know, would Moses have cracked under the strain earlier? Um, if you think about Joshua, that there was someone, of course, who took on Moses' mission in the end, right? Would Joshua wanted to have taken on that mission if Moses hadn't taken his father-in-law's advice? If he just carried on like, with this big queue of people and been the only person to work it out? Um... I don't know if you know that there's a constitution there's a, that's come out now, Jack, hasn't there? And you'll probably be receiving this by email, uh, and our movement in Korea has been trying to formulate this constitution for Chun Il Guk. And, um, and so you can read through that, and you can see, well, how much does this model of Moses sort of... Be, is, is it reflected in that constitution? And, um, and we can think, how, you know, how well is it going to work? Um, Of course, Moses has to trust these people, and they have to trust him uh, with the more difficult cases. But when we think about our local community, and we think about the journey that we see ourselves on together, and what our common understanding of leadership is here, there's Simon Cooper as the pastor, and Mr. Hayashi as the assistant pastor, uh, there's Chris responsible for the music, and... Um, uh, we now have this church council that we've been de developing since the last couple of years through our AGM. And, and now the pastor isn't any longer the chairperson of this council, but we have Tom O'Connell as the chairperson. That's a big step forward um, because it's not me chairing the church council. And, um, and we're trying to get into the process now where if there's a decision to be made, and it goes before the church council. And that's hard sometimes when a decision is so obviously a good one. Uh, and you've got an idea and you think, well, anyway, I'm just going to do this because it's obviously a good idea. <clears throat> Why do I need to put it on the agenda at the church council? Um, they would all agree with it anyway. Yeah? And, um, and so we had some ideas to change our Monday evening uh, education program to create some three-week seminars uh, on different topics rather than what we've been doing with William up until now. And it seems like through email everyone thinks it's a good idea, but so why do we need to put it before the council? Because actually, um, if the decision is taken by the whole church council, about ten people, it's actually a very different decision than if it's just made by me. It has more authority. It has more weight. It has uh, a chance to be more refined and to actually hone uh, and put into practice in the most effective way. But I think a difficult question for, for our movement, but also for our local community, is, well, how are we uh, developing a leadership culture where they can be a constant, refreshing change of leadership. And so if I felt, as the pastor, um, in a few months' time, that in my heart, you know, God's calling me to really focus on something that means I can't carry on here. How many of you, if I ask that question now, or, or, or made that statement now, hypothetically, I'm saying it now, but if it wasn't hypothetical, would stand up and say, 
yeah, I can take over. Oh, yes, I would like to put myself forward uh, and see if I can get the support of the congregation. How many of you? Yeah? But you don't have to choose by Sorry? You have to choose yourself. I have to choose? No, nobody has the right to choose. No, no one has the right to choose myself, but often, you know, you do need willing people in order to make a choice. <laughs> That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, yeah, how many people would be willing to be, have themselves put forward as a candidate? Some of you are thinking, oh, I'm way too young. Some of you are thinking, oh, I haven't seen a woman leader here for ages, can't be, you know. Some of you are thinking, oh, I'm just way too busy. Oh, yeah, Simon's got another job as well, but anyway. Um, maybe you're thinking many different things, but it's, it's actually probably a very pivotal question in terms of, whether we get over our Jordan River, whether we get into our promised land. So what do we need to change that more of you might feel that's something I could do? Yeah, that's the place I would like to be. That it wouldn't be just about me, but there would be a, a framework, a context where actually it's a shared leadership. So after this service, and after we've had lunch, our church council's meeting, and we've got an agenda. And some of the things on the agenda are actually things that are there because I've received an email from some of you making a, expressing a point of view that I felt, well, oh, someone's given some feedback here. Uh, I really need to get the, rest of the feedback from the rest of the council to, to see what everyone else thinks. So more and more, I hope you come to see this church council as the, one of the main vehicles of leadership in our community that everyone can have input to and, and potentially at some point be a member of. But just going back finally to conclude on this point about where do we learn leadership from. So when you go out into your week, can you just please take a look at the leadership around you Husbands, just look at how your wives are leading your family, your children. Wives, just look at how your husband is doing their role in leading the family. My dad said when we were on holiday, um, I'm the head of the family, and indicating to my wife, and your mother is the boss. <laughs> so you've got the head of the family and the boss. I thought that was quite good. But just think, when you go to work this week, those of you who work in a, in, a, in a place, in a team, or in an office environment, just analyze the leadership that you see there. And I just want to ask you to take some notes, even. And if you see something in particular that's really good or really awful, why don't you feed that in to me and to our church council, and, and we can do what our true father said and, and learn from many different examples of leadership. And, and bring, you know, like Jack was saying they were doing on this place at Guri, trying to really distill the best practices uh, in order to create, like, what True Father asked us to be, the best organization in the world. Did we become the best organization in the world? Since he said that? No, I don't think so. I mean, we all agree on that. Could we still do it? Yeah, of course we could. But we need to feed in what you're experiencing in your life. So when you go to LG next week, if you're able to get there, Callum, are you going to work at the moment? Uh, yeah, one or two days a week. Okay, so I don't know how much money they pump into their human resource uh, leadership programs and so forth, but I'm sure there's lots of things there that you see. And I just want you to, in your heart and mind, have a sense of awareness of what you're seeing there is not just for LG, but it might be also for your local church, for your community. And let's absorb what God has blessed in this world and so that we can be able to bless more the world around us. 
And uh, let's take some time now to pray together and um, think about the journey that the Israelites took with Moses and what he went through doing that. And uh, I'll say a prayer and then I just want you to take a time to find someone to pray with as we do when we meet together here and take some time to, yeah, you can come up, uh, Chris and George and whoever else, that'd be great. And uh, just take some time to find someone to pray with and, and pray about either what we've been talking about or about the people in your week that you want to pray for or things that you need prayer for. You can tell that person what kind of prayer you need this week. And uh, let's tell God what is in our heart, what is on our heart, and ask him to tell us what's in his heart right now. Okay, just uh, join me in a prayer. And then after I finish praying, please find someone to pray with. Loving Father, we come to you, we come in front of you as our heavenly parent, and you lead us with your love, and we want to lead those around us with the same love that you have shown to us. And we want to ask you to hear our prayers today. Let us be led well and teach us to lead others in a principled and uh, inspiring way. When we go to work this week, when we go to our colleges and schools, when we are out in our community, let us look for the examples of leadership that we see around us. Many of them, often the best examples, we hardly notice because they're done so quietly and beautifully. Holy Father, bring your blessing on this congregation this morning. I thank you for this family, this community that we can all be part of, that I can be part of, and um, we want to pray with each other now. I pray in my name, Bless Central Family, Arju. Let's pray together. You can, uh, yeah.
Dear Shirley, parents, uh, thank you for this, uh, this time now. And we're all gathered here and we really um, receive, I think, a really important message today, Father, and um, to really realize uh, leadership, Father, that is something that, yeah, it's to be shared and also to really to, um, also now to each individually feel a sense of responsibility, Father, and whatever where where we are in our lives, Father, and um, yeah, so we pray that we can yeah, reflect on some of the points, many of the points we could gain from the sermon, Father, and we also want to pray, especially now as we offer this offering, Father, that, um, yeah, Father, that uh, through this leadership, Father, that this offering can be really used to do your will, and, and that we can uh, really become a really strong community, able to really make... Uh, Really, it's a positive and strong effect Father, in this world. Uh, Father, I also, also want to pray for, uh, yeah, Father, and many things happening in the world at this time and also a very serious uh, situation in Ukraine. Father, we pray that some uh, p- uh, resolution of peace can somehow yeah, eventually be reached and that, uh, Father, um, doesn't become any more serious one than it already is one. So we want to pray this time. You can just be with each of us in our lives and that you can accept our offering. Pray on behalf of everyone here in the name of Sean and Jessica's blessing to a couple. How do you? Uh, we just got uh, one more quick announcement from Irina. Do you want to just come up? Um, So this is a quick announcement that was um, on the announcement page earlier, which is the um, second deadline for the Education and Outreach Fund. Um, So the deadline for applications will be the 31st of March, so it's just a month away. Well, under a month. It's the end of this month. It's March, right? Yeah, it's March. Um, So um, we were really pleased with the response we received last time, which ended in October. 
um, no, November, sorry. And we had uh, eight applications um, asking for more than £6,000. And we've successfully sponsored two of the projects now, one of which was the CARP Leadership um, event um, held in um, Chislehurst recently, led by Hyang Hee. Another one is an ongoing project um, by Sigrun Vitae in uh, South London, and she's doing a German friendship group where they share in German food and culture, and they just, it's just bringing people from all across her community together. And um, there's a few others that we've got in the pipeline. So we really want to encourage you to um, apply in the next application round. It's a way for you to take leadership and um, to put your projects, which I'm sure you do have in mind, and um, get, them, get them going. And we hope to support... Um, if we can't support all of them financially, we hope to help you either to apply for external funding or just help um, help strengthen your project. So um, please do apply and ask either myself, William, or Jennifer Unkamu if you have any questions um, or if you want an application form. And also keep your eyes peeled. Um, we're going to have a page on the uh, Unification Movement UK website uh, where we'll have some reports and pictures so you can see what kind of projects we've sponsored so far. Um, so thank you, and hopefully hear from some of you soon. And uh, just one last announcement. Next, uh, on Wednesday evening, March 5th, um, at midnight to 5 a.m., there's a Iljong prayer in the forum here. Um, so you can come along if you want, want to pray about anything. And um, it's been quite an quite important week um, for someone, Simon Cooper on Thursday, <laughs> <laughs> celebrated his uh, 42nd birthday. So I think we uh, can all... Uh, Chris, do you want to come up with him? So, um, yeah, so we've got a lovely cake around the back, and uh, so let's all, let's all uh, show our gratitude and appreciation uh, to Simon, and uh, let's uh, celebrate his 42nd uh, birthday together. So, uh, Chris, you want to? Have a good week. Uh, God bless you. There's a uh, lovely curry rice downstairs. <laughs> <laughs>